I left this uh, in your PowerPoint, so you should be able uh, to retrieve it. But this gives you an idea of the many different shapes that viruses can actually have. So the first one, A, is your tobacco mosaic virus. And the bottom pictures are showing you what it looks like in real life. And then the top pictures above it are the same virus that they've done um, an artist rendering of. So if you look at the tobacco mosaic virus, it is an RNA virus. And all of its capsomeres, you can see those little individual units are making up this cylindrical virus. Of course, it only attacks um, the tobacco and it gives it a cylindrical and it sort of winds around. It reminds me a lot of the, um, the DNA, the way, the way it uh, winds around its histone. But all of the capsomeres are um, causing this helical uh, property as it winds around and makes up the virus. Your second one is an adenovirus. Now, we haven't been over adenoviruses yet, but these are respiratory viruses. And they can also cause tumors. So they're very serious. They're RNA, tum they're RNA I'm sorry, they're DNA, <clears throat> but they're, um, they're upper respiratory. So you can see that the capsid, the capsomeres are, it, we've got that DNA in the center, and then the way the, the capsomeres are, it gives a helical property to the uh, capsid. And then there are tiny, tiny little extensions that are glycoproteins. Now, glycogen is a carb and protein is a protein. So these are the, the glycoproteins that are on the outside that have to match the glycoprotein on the cell that it's trying to infect. So with an adenovirus, this would be upper respiratory and you would have, um, you know, symptoms of, of uh, coughing, sore throat, um, being stuffy, that kind of thing. Now on your third one, this is an influenza virus and it, this is your flu. So it has RNA, but look at its shape. You have the capsomeres making up the capsid in the center each one of those actually kind of looks like a tobacco mosaic virus, but altogether they're surrounded by this membranous envelope that is protecting this RNA. And then we have the glycoproteins on the outside. So the picture below, you can see that the influenza virus has got this really solid protective envelope that is protecting that RNA. Now, because it does have RNA, it's going to have to go back. That's why it's, sometimes they're called retro, because they go back to make that piece of DNA so that they can transcribe it and end up making their proteins. On the far right, we have what's called a bacteriophage, and they call them T4 phages, or sometimes you just see them as phage. But this is one, and I know I've drawn this on the board for you, but this is one that infects bacteria only. This is the one that um, Hershey and Chase put the tracer on so that they could watch it actually infect the bacteria. So if you look at it, the head portion has got a helical property with the DNA. And then it has this tail sheath and these fibers, these tail fibers that land on the outside of the bacteria. Then with the needles at the bottom, I think you can see the little points coming out of the tail sheath. It injects its DNA into the host, shuts the DNA of the host down, and starts replicating its own phages. And, and like I said, this is the one that Hershey and Chase used. Uh, they watched it, and, this is, and that's how they knew that um, DNA was actually the genetic material. So as you can, these are just a sampling You've got one that infects plants, you've got two that infect animals, and then the one on the far right infects bacteria. So nothing's really safe from a virus. They're capable of infecting um, everything.